Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I'll tell you, uh, Mackenzie is our adopted daughter, super lover. Um, she and Alexis went to the same university and, and uh, studied music. But um, looking at, at what, what took place in your life last summer... And, uh, and, and, and I love the fact that, that God can take any mess. God can take any situation. Um, I know that the doctors just share with me about that. And I know we watched on the video, but there's just something I think that people can be encouraged uh, by this. And they don't have to be in a place like you were. But people are in different walks of life, different seasons. But the doctor said she cannot have a pristine healing. But y'all flipped it. So talk about that real quick. What happened there? Well, I want to go back on what you said and the fact that you do not have to go through something traumatic like acute hemorrhagic lip encephalitis <laughs> to have a story and to live God's story. That's something that I've been incredibly encouraged by, that all of us can be used to be instruments of God's goodness and his love and his mercy and his healing power and showing what he can do through us. Um, in the pristine healing, another thing that my family learned was that while we were praying for me to have strength to walk again and to breathe and to swallow and to speak and then eventually to sing again and maybe graduate college. Five weeks, yay! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> we were praying for pristine healing from a God who is pristine. It's not my perfection that we were striving for because we're not perfect. It's him. It's him who's perfect. And that is what we were praying for. That is what pristine means for us and for us in the church of Christ. Amen. I love you. Oh. And you and your team did an amazing, amazing job. Thank you so much. Give Mackenzie and her team one more big hand. Guys, thank you guys so much. You guys rock, really. When I hear them sing, it just makes me want to sing like them, like, oh. But then my throat hurts. <laughs> you know what? As I was watching um, the testimony video, I was, um, I was very much impacted by the words of uh, Mackenzie's sister. And, and I think that we've all been in this place um, and, and there were the words when she said, how am I going to live past this? How am I going to live past this? Some of us have experienced maybe divorce. Uh, some of us have experienced maybe uh, tragic loss. Uh, some of us have experienced um, severe illnesses, sicknesses, diseases. And, and, and maybe you have asked yourself, how am I going to live past this situation? And as I started just thinking and, and planning and preparing for our, our Good Friday service, you know what, I can't help but to go back to the message of the cross at Calvary. I mean, there's just so much pristine. And I love that word, huh? That word pristine means perfect. We have a pristine God. He is perfect in every possible way. And let me tell you something. You don't need to be perfect, but he perfects what concerns you. And that's the pristine God that we serve. But as I started thinking about this, this, this powerful moment of, of Calvary, you know what? This, this, these crosses represented a sentence of death. And maybe right now you're not facing something like Mackenzie did, but it, it, it surely feels that way. Maybe right now you have some family issues, some health issues, some financial issues, and you're thinking, how are we going to live past this? How are we going to get beyond this point? Well, let me tell you something. I want to I wanna talk to you about the power of this death. The power of this death is still alive today, and it has power to save you. It has power to heal you. We need to get back to this message. Look, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Watch this. It says, the message of the cross. Everybody say, the message. I'll tell you, there's, no, there's, there's not one more important message than when you preach or speak 
or read or chew on, meditate than the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. It says, for the message of the cross is, seems foolish to those who are lost and dying. And you know what? When I read verses like this, like Mackenzie and her family, you know what? I have experienced plenty of times with, with, with situations in, in our family life with health where it was literally a life or death sentence. Um, and it's not easy. But as I've talked to people in hospitals, when, we're, when we were fighting to, to not stay down, and any time we would talk about the power of Jesus Christ, people would literally think we were foolish and stupid. And when we read this verse, I think we have to come back and reflect to ourselves. I wonder what our Christian walk looks like. You know what? Is, is the cross only as powerful as my bumper sticker? Is the cross only as powerful as the necklace I wear around my neck? Or is the cross still a message that I hold fast to, that I embrace to, that I realize has the power to deliver me? Is it foolishness to me? Or is it... Grab another microphone, guy. Check. Testing. Want to run like the wind. Make sure y'all check that. I will preach this message with a mic or no mic. Amen. You know it's going you know to be a good message. When you're losing power, that's okay. I still have power in one, and his name is Jesus. So check this out. He says, so the message of the cross seems foolish to those who are lost and dying, and, but it is God's power. Say, but it's God's power. It's God's power. But it's God's power to us who are being saved. You know, Calvary is God simply saying to you and I, I still have power to save you and to heal you. Also, this message of Calvary is also a divine message when God is saying to you and I today, on Friday, 2018, I have divine power to still reach you. This message of Calvary is very powerful. But listen, it's not just the message of of, of, of divine, uh, uh, you know, anointing to reach you and I, but I believe that beyond just being a message for you and I, it was also a message to Satan. Come on, that, that message on Calvary was Jesus telling Satan, guess what? Hell cannot have them. That's the power of this cross. That's the power of this message. Jesus came with this divine message that literally was telling Satan, you can't have them. And because of the cross and because of what he did, death was just an incident 2,000 years ago. Because I know that so many of us, we face situations like Mackenzie where it just seems like when you're giving a message by the doctors, okay, and I respect doctors, okay, please, if you're a doctor in here, God bless you, we love you, I appreciate medicine, I appreciate doctors, but let me tell you something, uh, doctors are practicing, but God is the great physician, amen? What looks impossible with man is not impossible with God. And so as, as, as you look at this, this message of the cross, this was just an incident. It wasn't the final state of what God was going to do. It wasn't the final uh, 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 say of the enemy or anyone that was trying to bring a message of disappointment and disillusion. I mean, Jesus made sure of that. And so as you begin to understand that in these times, before the cross, people had no hope. I mean, the only reason that Mackenzie and her family had hope is because they believed in the power of this message called the cross. There's no other reason. When you're, when you're hit with something so, so, so painful or, or when you are in a situation that looks impossible and, and how am I going to live past this point? Or have you ever said something like this? How did I get here? How did I get so far? Like this wasn't me two years ago. This wasn't me five years ago. How, how did I come to this place? And so the people of then, before the cross, they, they had no savior. They had no hope. Man, if anyone brought them bad news, they, they had to just go ahead and accept and embrace the fact that, man, that death sentence, that is the reality of my life. But then Jesus shows up and he says, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do a flip 
on the devil. Yeah, what the devil meant for bad. He, you know what Satan did? He said, I will have a pristine death for you. But Jesus said, but I'll have a pristine resurrection life for you. Every single one of us. And everyone has down days. Every single one of us. This woman, Mackenzie, she had a down time for a good amount of time. And you know what? Jesus also had down days. And I know that we never talk about his down days. We only talk about his resurrection and his power. But man, he was down for three days. For three days, our Lord and Savior was down. But one thing I've learned about Jesus Christ is that though Jesus was down for three days, down for the count, have you ever felt being in a place in your life where you just feel down, depressed, oppressed. Man, you can't even get out of bed. You don't even want to see anyone. You start just having a food binge. You turn off the lights. Man, you shut the windows. You're trying to keep everybody out, but that's not the way Jesus works. Though he had three days of downtime, within those three days, he was working some great miracles. He doesn't stay down. As a matter of fact, Jesus, he got up, then he got out, then he said, and I want to come in your life. He got up, he got out, and he says, and I want to come into your life. Let me tell you something. Once Jesus is invited into your life, there is no possible way that you can stay down. You're not supposed to stay down. Not when Christ is in you. You always have the resurrection life to get you back up again. That's what this, this, this Good Friday is all about. It's a message of get up and get out because there's so much divine, pristine things that you have to finish on this earth. Every single one of you. This cross today, and listen, uh, stay with me, okay, because this, this, these crosses, they represented shame. I don't know what shame maybe you're experiencing right now. Maybe there's some things that you've been living intentionally. Maybe there's some things that you've been practicing. Just like a sport, you can practice sin. You can be practicing something that you never thought that you would be living right now at this moment. And I want you to stay with me because I'm telling you, I'm going to bring this message back all around. And you're going to realize that, wow, I'm going to see the cross so differently from this day forward. But Jesus got up. Jesus got out. And Jesus wants to come in. Look at someone say, Jesus got up. Come on, say it with me. He got up. Tell them, and he got out. But he wants to come in. Amen. You're not supposed to stay down. We don't have to be afraid anymore of dying. We don't have to be afraid anymore of sickness. We don't have to be afraid anymore of fear or terror of anything that's trying to come to us like depression, etc. Okay? But let's remember something, okay, about these, these three crosses. Notice it wasn't just about a cross. It was about three crosses. And I know we talk about the one cross, Jesus. But I want to talk to you about the other two crosses. Because these guys were, were condemned. The other two guys, man, they, they messed up. They, they, they did some stuff that was not so nice. They were murderers. You're talking about two guys that literally pretty much had the same lifestyle. They lived a life of addiction. They lived a life of rebellion. They lived a life of resentment. They lived a life of all kinds of stuff. I bet they all, them two guys, they also lived a life of all kinds of trauma from their childhood. I mean, think about it. I'm sure that it wasn't a one-time deal for them to get to the place of this kind of death. That was a sentence that you are done. But check this out. I want to take you to the story of this moment when they're ready to crucify Jesus, a man who was without, without sin, a man who was innocent, and yet they were, they were putting him on a cross of shame. The, this cross not only represents shame, guilt, and condemnation, but you know what it represents? It rep represents our nakedness, man. The devil wanted to definitely put a, put a spectacle on, on, on Jesus. He wanted to make fun. He was looking at that cross, and he said, man, that is so foolish. Let me go ahead and do it this way. I don't know what cross you're carrying right now. 
Maybe you're carrying the cross of bitterness. Maybe you're carrying the cross of unforgiveness. You see, you don't have to be a murderer to be carrying the cross of something. Maybe you're carrying the cross of cancer right now. Maybe you're carrying the cross of something that is so painful that you never thought in a million years that you would be carrying such a cross. Because remember, this cross represented shame, guilt, condemnation. In other words, you're guilty. What cross are you carrying? Think, think for a moment. Because it wasn't just about the cross of Jesus. This, this message of the cross is, is, a, is a message about brokenness. It's a message about evil, sin, but it's also a message about redemption. Look at this. Are you guys ready to read this with me? Look, Luke chapter 23, verse 39 through 43. Read, read with me. Check this out. It says, one of the criminals. Everybody say one of the criminals. <laughs> All right, here we go. That right there is already juicy. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him. In other words, just picture it. So there was a guy, go back to the crosses, please. So there was a guy on the left, there was a guy on the right, and then there was the guy in the center. So the dude on the left, man, was like, man, he's making fun of Jesus. Like, dude, you're not no savior. You're not no healer. You're not no powerful nothing. Come on, this moment was foolishness to him. Man, he didn't even care. Look what it says. It says, are you not the Christ? Come on, aren't you the one that does all these amazing miracles? Listen to me, because some of us right now, when you doubt God like that, you don't have to be intentional. But right now, without even knowing, you can have a spirit of doubt. And we're no different than the guy that's already doubting what Christ is or what he does. And he says to him, listen, aren't you that Christ? Huh? Come on, save yourself. Do something. Save us. If you're so powerful, do something right now. Get us off this cross. Do you not even fear God? Look at this. Um, verse 40, sorry. But the other answered, okay, so the other guy, the guy on the right answered, hey, listen, man, rebuke you, bro. What is wrong with you? Are you crazy? Do you not even fear God? Do you have no respect for God? You see, it's so easy when life hits you, it's easy to start blaming God when things don't go the way you wanted them to go. When, when you go through something that, that was out of your control, when you go through something that has been so painful like betrayal or, or someone did something so harsh to harm you, maybe you started with a group of people and, and, and someone within that group started, you know, sabotaging you and, and maybe someone that you did business life with and they, they stole from you, they ripped you. Maybe there's some friends that you trusted. Man, you, you literally, you, you knew that, man, this is the person that I can trust with my life, my children, and then they backstabbed you. What have you gone through? Because I'm telling you, when you go through stuff like that in life, it is easy without even knowing that we can become no different than this guy. Only this guy's just a little bit more forward about his attitude. And verse uh, uh, 40, so he says, don't you even fear God since you are under the same sentence? Look at that. You're under the same sentence of condemnation. Dude, you're in the same place that us three are in right now. Don't you even fear God? This guy, look, he says, and we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this guy, but this man, he's done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, look at this, today you shall be with me in paradise. As I started just preparing for this message, I started thinking, wow, this guy in the left, let's talk about this guy in the left. This guy in the left obviously was callous. He was cold. I mean, I want us to think about what, what, what our Christian walk even means to us anymore. I wonder if we've treated the cross no different than this guy who has lost complete reverence and even a fear of God. 
if you look at this guy, not only was he callous, he didn't even care. The guy's about to die, and he's still cursing God. He's cursing Jesus at his lowest point in life, knowing that this guy right here, Jesus, the guy in the middle, he is the one that can save him. He's the one that can deliver him. Aren't you glad that we have a Savior that can take every single one of our mistakes and anoint them for something awesome? I mean, you have grace. You have mercy. You, the brother was 10 feet away. These crosses were 10 feet away from each other. Man, you can have Jesus 10 feet away from you and not even have the reverence to realize that he's here to save you. You can be so close to God in a church service like this, but so far in your faith from knowing that he can deliver you from any situation. Ten feet away. And this guy's talking all this stuff. So I started thinking, man, I wonder what happened to this guy. Just like a lot of Christians, I wonder what happened to a lot of good Christians. No more fear, no more reverence. I wonder what happened to some people in this service. Listen, the last service, you know what, there's all kinds of people. Every single church in America right now is packed with people. But I wonder how many of those people are so lost and far away from God that they don't realize that God has the power, that he has the message in this cross that can deliver them. What was it about this guy? You see, the guy on the left, he had a cross of rebellion. And let me explain this to you, okay? Each cross means something. So the guy on the left was the cross of rebellion. Jesus, the cross in the middle, was the cross of redemption. But let me tell you, the difference between rebellion and redemption was the guy at the third cross was on the cross of repentance. You see, he knew he was wrong. You see, he knew he deserved the death that was about to come upon him. But not only did he know that he didn't deserve forgiveness, that he didn't deserve a second chance, that he didn't deserve anything from this person who's innocent named Jesus. But let me tell you what he did know. But he knew that he was 10 feet away from a miracle. He was 10 feet away from redemption. And he begins to talk to him. And he says, hey, listen, Jesus, man, I'm sorry for that dude. You have two guys have the same sentence, have the same lifestyle experience, have the same circumstances, but one of them finally comes to a place in his life that he realizes, man, but there's something powerful about this guy that's in the middle who can do something about this situation. There's something about this guy right now. Maybe right now you're in the middle of something that's crazy. Well, in your middle is someone who wants to redeem you. In your middle is someone that wants to heal you. In your middle is someone that wants to do something that's so miraculous that's going to leave you in awe of what God is going to do in your life, like a Mackenzie. I don't know what your cross is. Maybe you're, maybe you're carrying the cross of cancer. Maybe you're carrying the cross of resentment, the cross of bitterness, and not realizing that, you know what, maybe right now you have the cross of rebellion. You're not, you're not willing to, to yield and to submit and to, and listen, you don't, you don't lose with God. I think so many people don't come to God because they think, well, once you start serving God, you lose everything. Well, let me tell you something. If you notice, the cross is a plus, not a minus. He adds to you. He doesn't take from you. It's a win-win with God. I've had people tell me, you know, Mauricio, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can give my life to Christ. And I tell them this, simple, very simple. I say, you know what, what do you got to lose, man? If what I'm telling you is the truth, man, you got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. God wants to bring redemption to people. <laughs> Both the guys, same issues, same exact circumstance. But the difference was that one carried the cross of rebellion while the other one carried the cross of repentance. He realized that he was off, man. And I think some of us here, without even knowing, we know we're off. But sometimes you got to go left in order to go right. <laughs> sometimes you have to. Sometimes we take that path. 
but you can always get right. That's why it's three crosses. Because all of us are living somewhere there. You're in the middle of your greatest breakthrough in Jesus. You're in the middle. It's not how you start it. It's how you finish it. And Jesus was like, hey, listen, man. What Satan meant for bad for us today, bro, guess what? Let's just go ahead and finish this pain. But just give me a moment. Because on the third day, you and I are going to come out of that tomb. And you're going to experience paradise. I bet you that man who was on the cross of repentance was no longer afraid of death. No longer afraid of, of sin. No longer afraid of his future. He just said, man, okay, this is awesome. Come on, kill me already, will you? Take my life already. That's what God wants us on Good Friday. He wants us to come back to the place of repentance. True story. I remember when I was in my cross of cancer. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, laying in my bed and hearing the doctors tell McGinsey the same thing. And my doctor was awesome. He's still my doctor today. He's my oncologist. And, uh, and he basically said, Mauricio, there's nothing else we can do for you, man. And when he said that, um, I just looked at my wife and I said, hey, you know what we're going to do? I said, we're going to know what we know to do. And we're just going to take communion. There's, what's a piece of bread and some juice going to do? I'll tell you what it does. It's got power. Jesus said, when you take this, he said, remember me. See, he wants you to remember the cross today. He wants you to remember that Calvary was a message to you and I 2,000 years later. It's still a powerful message saying, I can still save you. And so I did. I, I, I sat on my bed and, and I grabbed my, my bread and, and I realized that the Bible says that he was pierced for our iniquities. He was pierced. The ushers, you can hand that out already. That was your cue right there. <laughs> Amen. Praise the second cue. Praise God. Third. He was pierced. He was pierced. He was pierced. He was pierced. And, and so I, I took the, the bread. I took the juice. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I began to pray. I said, Father, my sentence is death. And it was. That's my sentence. It's, they said I, they can't do nothing anymore. That's my sentence. And so I laid there in my bed, and I remember just tears flowing down because I wasn't afraid of death. I was just afraid I wasn't going to see my babies anymore, my family. That's all I was scared about. Like, man, I ain't going to see my kids anymore. I didn't tell them that. But I went ahead and I took the bread and I broke it. And, and what I prayed was this. I said, Jesus. And I, and I quoted Isaiah. He was pierced for our, look at that. He was pierced for our what? He was pierced for our what? He was pierced for our what? See, sometimes without even knowing, you can be living a life of rebellion right now at this moment. That's why it's so important for us to always come back and, and, and get back to this message of the cross. Because why? Because we then will realize that he crushed he was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. And he was whipped so that we can be healed. And so as I broke this bread, I said, God, I believe with all faith that as I take communion, as I receive communion, that your brokenness can make me whole again. And, and I, I took communion in the hospital bed where there was no more hope for doctors or medicine, but there was hope in the cross of Jesus Christ. And I took that and uh, uh, took it and I said, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and, and they gave me two options, go home, make you feel better. They said, you can carry the cross of cancer 
or you can carry the cross of a very intense, dangerous surgery. It was like 14-hour surgery. And I said, well, they both sound good, I guess. I don't know. I took the 14-hour. And as they were rolling me in that bed, I'll never forget it. I remember being rolled for, it felt like days. <laughs> I was on every floor. It's a six-story hospital. I was on every floor, critical care, intensive care, uh, intensive care. First floor, second, third, fourth, fifth, and I was taken everywhere. And I remember the day, the day I was like, okay, God, I'm not afraid. The cross of death, I fear not. And I was just right there in light, 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 light. You know those ugly hospital lights? I hate those lights. Light, 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 light. And as I just laid there, um, then all my family and friends were waiting for me right before going into the, the operating room. And in my heart, I never said it with my lips to my family. But in my mind and my heart, I said, Lord, if this is it, then take me home. I'm good. But just take care of my family. But I believe that you have power to heal me. I believe that you have power to deliver me. And I believe that you're not done with me. So um, do something. And so they rolled me in. And, and I'll never forget the nurse. She, she's getting rid of the anesthesia and everything. And she's like, how you doing, honey? She went like that. And I'm like, I'm blessed. And you know what she said? She said, if you're so blessed, then why are you here? I was like, no, you didn't, girl. I will get out this bed and not. I'm just, I didn't say that. I wanted to say that. Like, I will, I will pull out the four tubes inside my body. I will spray you. And I just paused and I looked at her. I said, ma'am, I said, you know what? I may be here right now in this bed. But I'm going through those doors, and I pointed to the doors of the surgery, and I said, I'm going to go through those doors. See? And I'm going to get up. And I'm going to get out on the other side. See? That's the cross. See, Satan on one side said, no hope. But Jesus on the other side of the cross said redemption. Healing. And, uh. 14 hours ended up being like a nine-hour surgery. And the next thing I know, I'm like, I, I don't know if I was in heaven. I woke up. You know, like, what the heck? And then this pathologist comes in, miracle man, miracle man. I'm like, what the? You know, I'm still trying to figure out where I am. You know, I was happy on the drugs, you know, just, hey. I'm like, definitely, you ain't Jesus. But. But you know what? I, I realize this. The message of the cross may be foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are living, it's the power that saves. Amen. Take up your bread and say, Jesus, I receive my healing. You were broken so that I can be made whole again. I want you to grab your little break, and I want you to break it, literally break it. Take a piece. Take that. And just chew on that for a little bit and say, thank you, God. It's healing for my mind, healing for my heart, healing for my body, Jesus. Remember me. Say with me, remember me. That's what you're doing tonight. Remember me. Take your juice. And I want you to say thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood. The blood that cleanses me and washes me of all my sins. I receive this by faith. I receive the forgiveness of my sins, past, present, future. In Jesus' name. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.